Hey, it's Tim here. In 21.4, you can now use multiple data sources for map layers. Now, that doesn't sound like an incredibly new feature, but up until now, if you wanted to use two spatial data sets with map layers, you had to do some data mapping, essentially, to get it all into one data set, either using relationships, doing some data prep in something like Autrix, or doing some modeling elsewhere. Essentially, you don't need to do that anymore. You can see here that I've actually got a map. It consists of red dots and uh, what is essentially blue blue and yellow lines. These actually represent roads in London. So the map I'm looking at is actually London. On the top left hand side, you can see that I've got my bus data extract. And then on the second data set, you can see here I have something called TQ Road Link. This actually comes from a company called Ordnance Survey. If I swipe over here to the left hand side and actually go to this first tab, you can see that they have this open data capability where you can download data sets from their website here in the UK. What I've done is I've downloaded the road data. So I actually downloaded the road network for the entire of UK. And I, I know having worked with this data set that TQ actually represents the, the grid square that is actually London essentially. I've then also gone and found the TFL bus stop locations in London. So I've downloaded this open data set and I've also used that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to bring these two data sets together to make this map uh, without having to do any sort of data prep, essentially keeping them as two separate data sources. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so here I am. I'm I'm, I'm in Tableau, nothing's been created, everything's uh, pretty much good to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to my bus data because I wanna highlight a small problem that I stumbled across at least in the early version of this release. If I go over to the uh, particular file in question, it's actually a text file. And if I go to the 21.4 demos, if I actually go to my desktop, it's actually there, the bus stop data. If I open it up, you can see that it's just a standard CSV file. There's nothing sort of sensational about this. Now, in the UK, we have a different sort of uh, grid system. It's called, um, I don't actually know what it's called, but it uses something called Eastings and Northings, okay? And this sort of confuses me all the time. In essence, Northings refer to uh, latitude and Eastings refer to longitude, essentially. But if I actually try and use Tableau's uh, built-in make point capability to convert this uh, to latitude and longitude, which is what I can then use to visualize it, because it's a really large text file, the performance of this just sort of goes through the floor. So I'm just gonna show you this function working first with a filter data set so you can see that it does work, but then I'm gonna show you how I actually resolve this using all tricks. So here we go, we're gonna go in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab stop area, and I'm immediately gonna filter it to maybe just two specific areas, hit apply, hit okay. The next thing I'm going to do is create the make point function. So I'm going to go here and create calculated field. And you can see that I have the easting here. I actually need the northing first, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll sort of make this um, a bigger to read as well as just making it larger so we can see it on the screen here. And then I'll open this uh, little arrow here on the left hand side and the right hand side. Go to the uh, spatial functions, which are just there, and you can see that there's, there's this make point function that I can use to convert this into the relevant um, sort of latitude and longitude that I need. Because we don't have that, what we need to do is specify the code for our uh, coordinate system. So let's use this function. So it's gonna be a make point. And once we've done make point, you want the northing. Northing represents uh, latitude, I believe. So let's just first um, go with northing then a comma easting. And then what I now need is the code. Now I never remember the code. There's a website that has all of this, but in essence, I've got this blog here, which is the first thing I Googled from the data school in the UK. Uh, it's called the EPSG 27700. There's actually a really good website that has this. If I just grab this and I just type in EPSG, uh, you can see that it actually comes up. Um, you can actually search these codes uh, for pretty much any country in the world. So if you come across a coordinate system that you're not sure about, you can actually just type in the code, hit search, and it will come up with the, um, actually, that, that I did the wrong thing there. If I just type in the code itself, and uh, you can see that it comes up with a relevant uh, coordinate system. But I know this is the right code. What you can also do is just type in United Kingdom and it will search for all the coordinate systems that might exist that are being used by different people in the United Kingdom. Of course, the one we want here comes up at the top. And what you need is this code here, 27700. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna go back to our calculation and that is the number we're gonna paste right at the end of this make point function. And if I just call this a point, because essentially what the make point does is it takes the X and the Y coordinate and creates a point on a spatial map. So we can go ahead, hit apply, hit okay. And if we 
we now visualize these points, you'll see that we get one, two, three, four, five, six points here. And we can separate these out by giving them um, a name and putting that on detail. So now each stop here will have its own detail and you can kind of select that. Now, the challenge we've got here is if I just zoom out here and go to map layers, um, we can see that the map layer here is not really helpful. So let's go to streets and you can see that it's, it's, it's actually, I think it's put us in the middle of nowhere. Let's just zoom out and you can see this is just completely wrong, isn't it? <laughs> It's put us in, I, I don't know, that, I can't believe there's a bus stop in the middle of the ocean. So this this looks suspicious to me. Um, when I tried this earlier, it was not there. I wonder if I've got the easting and northing the wrong way round. Let me just double check. So location, northing, location, easting. L this should be, let's check the make point function. So latitude and longitude. Let's go over here and uh, let's just look at this. Um, um, I'm just going to Google this, make sure that I've got this right. Easting, northing, latitude, longitude. Google is the answer for pretty much everything here. So latitude is denoted by northing. And OK, I think I did put them the wrong way around. So latitude is denoted by northing. No, I put them the correct way around. And longitude is denoted by easting. So uh, and longitude is denoted by easting X. Yeah. So I've got these the right way around. I don't know what's happening. We'll just carry on <laughs> and assume this is OK. Um, the long and story short of it is if I then remove this filter and I try and run this on this entire data set, it grinds to a halt. Everything sort of freezes up. The main reason is, is that function's got to run on this text file. Even if I take an extract on the CSV, it takes a while. So that's not going to be great for this video. So what I did is I actually put the same data set into all tricks. So this is all tricks. Uh, you can see this is a um, uh, um, ready setup. I've got my same bus stop data. I've got a um, create point function here. And all I've done with the create point function is I've put in the location of the easting, location of the northing. And you can see that I've actually got these, um, I've got these set up differently actually to how I had them in Tableau. So that might explain why things are going the wrong way around. I can never remember it, but if you're stuck, just Google it. And then in all tricks, you've got this uh, capability to select a projection. I've selected the correct projection. If you're not sure, you can always search it yourself, but you can see here it says EPSG 27700. And then when I run the flow, it basically writes out a hyperfile and you can actually see the output. All the data points are now here available. And there's 19,000 1,801 records, so there's 19,801 bus stops in the London area. I'm not sure how many of them are active, but nonetheless, we're going to be able to visualize them very soon. So here we are, we have the data, and I'm outputting it to a hyper file. And just for reference, what I'll do is I'll disconnect this particular file because I don't need it to, to write again. Um, I'll just disconnect this all together because I don't need this to write. But what I'll do if I run that, you can see how quickly all tricks run that file. It's super fast. So you know, in some cases, you're going to be better off doing some data prep outside of Tableau or outside something else before you get to the next step. OK, let's jump back to Tableau and carry on making this map. So what I've done is I've gone back to Tableau here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'm going to delete the sheet first so just we don't get like an error. It's not going to let me because there's no other sheet. So what I'll do is I'll create a new sheet, then I'll go in and delete it. And that will just clear it. And now we can close this connection to the CSV. And instead, we can connect to this hyper file. So let's go ahead and connect to this bus data. You can see that it's been created there. And now we're in. Everything opens really, really quickly. And if we go to sheet number two, you can see that we now have this centroid, which if I just double click it, loads instantly. So you can see it works much faster now that the data has been pre-processed and I'm working off an extract, even though the icon doesn't say I am, I'm actually reading live from an extract. So that's why it looks like that. Now we've done this, we need to bring in our second data set. And for this, we need to go and get the open uh, row, street roadmaps, essentially. Now, um, if I go back to my Ordnance Server website, you can download lots of different things. The data set I specifically downloaded was OS Open Roads. And they've got like a standard terms of usage. Um, so I think it's important that I mention that I'm using this data set as part of that uh, particular uh, standard use. But nonetheless, now that I've downloaded everything, I can just go ahead and connect to the relevant shapefile. So for this, I need to go to Tableau, select Spatial File. And now that I'm here in 21.4 uh, demos, I've got the folder that came from Open um, Ordnance Survey even, and I can go to the data folder. And I personally know that TQ represents the London area. So let's go ahead and find the TQ uh, shapefiles. Now there's actually several types of shapefiles for the road network. The one I'm interested in is, in is the road link. Uh, not the road node. The road node just, I think, represents the points at which sort of the roads connect. But the road link actually shows you the road. So if I go ahead and open that, 
you'll see that Tableau reads their shapefile. And because it's a shapefile, it actually shows me all the other shapefiles in here. So I could bring more shapefiles in. I don't need to do that. I don't need to sort of union these and get something crazy going on. You could do that. I wonder, maybe that's another video. How many shapefiles can Tableau handle? We'll try and test it out. Uh, but nonetheless, if I go to sheet two, you'll see that I now have two data sources here on the top left connected. What I'll do is I'll go to the second sheet, the third sheet in this case, and I'll just show you the geometry. So we'll double click the geometry and we'll sort of push Tableau a bit to its limit and make it load all these rows. This actually works. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. My computer is fairly powerful, so it shouldn't have any issues doing this. So we'll just give it some time. And there you go. It's loaded the entire road network for the southeast to this is the TQ zone of the entire UK. Now, this is not a manageable data set. If you think about how many roads are represented in this data set, it's actually crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter this down a little bit just so we can work with it. So let's go ahead and put the function filter in the filters and we're just going to select A and B roads. These are the major roads here in the UK. Hit apply and then hit OK. Oh, actually apply is fine. And now we've got a more manageable sort of set of data. So you can see the two constituent sets of data that we want to work with. For the record, if I add the road number onto detail, then uh, each of these individual roads actually becomes selectable. And what we can actually do is put the function on color so we can see the main roads and the B roads. Essentially, B roads are linked between the A roads and the A roads are typically used to get you from one place to another. And around London, they sort of coalesce and they sort of go outwards, essentially. So if I had other quadrants and regions, you could sort of see them uh, sort of make the map. But all we're really interested in here is London. OK, so what I'm now going to do is bring these two together. You can see that I haven't done any data prep between them. In a new sheet, I'm going to start building that final visualization that I showed you. So here I am on a new sheet. Um, what I'm now going to do is just start working with these two data. So you can actually see how this feature works. So again, I'll repeat that step I just made. Uh, we're going to bring in all the roads uh, because it's cached. It's loaded a little bit. It's loaded a little bit faster. And what we can now do, uh, I'm going to filter this again to just the A and B road. So let's just keep all those roads. And remember, the question we're trying to answer here is we're trying to see where the bus stops are in relation to the roads. It's a very simple question. There's nothing sort of too complex. I'll put function on color so we can see where the main roads are. And for this, um, if I just if I just do this, let's let's uh, let's just do this. And if I just select. Uh, I've just drawn a circle here and you can see it's sort of see it's just around London. So I'll just bring this out. And if I just select those, you see that it kind of does select them. And now that didn't work because again, I haven't put the road name or road number on detail. So if I put that on detail, then try and draw my circle again, you can see this works a lot better. And now you can see it's selecting the roads. Now some roads go all the way into London from central London. That makes sense. Again, as I described before, I'm actually going to uh, keep all of these. So I'm going to right click and keep only these roads in my visualization. So you can see it's filtered out all the other roads. And then what I can do is I can just sort of zoom in here and uh, just move my map in to where I'm actually interested in analyzing. So let's just sort of move it here. OK, so this is about right. We're going to keep it like this. Now, the next thing I want to do is bring in my bus data. And this is the really cool thing here. If I just go in and I essentially start dragging my centroid, you'll see that the bus data allows me to add to another map layer without doing any sort of complex linking to the previous data set. So it is a sort of blend in a way. It is working like a blend. If I go to my TQ road link, you'll see that there's no sort of linkage, but it's just understanding that these two things are working in the same geographical context. And it's just layering the two things on top of each other. So what this allows you to do is essentially use spatial data as a way of adding context. Let's keep pushing on with the bus data. So um, at the moment, I've got them uh, both as maps. What I want to do is make the bus data circles and make the road data just like a normal background area. So um, what I'll do for this is I'll go to this automatic selection here and I'll turn it to a circle and you'll see that uh, nothing happens because essentially what I haven't done is put anything on level of detail that can distinguish all of these bus points. So at the moment, we just have this little gray circle. You can't see it there, but there it is. That's basically the average of all of these places in one place. There's sort of no nothing to separate the data out. So what I can then do uh, is I can then, if I just go back to my uh, um, bus data here, I can then get the stop name and put that on detail and boom, you should get all the bus stops coming out. So this was the right area to sort of zoom into. We can see that we did a fairly good job of that. What I'll do is I'll make it red just to make it easier to see. And I'll put the size down a little bit so we can see that <laughs> these are really, really tiny points. Now, of course, 
Uh, what I haven't done in here is mapped the bus stops that are only on A and B roads. Remember, that's what my sort of uh, filter here is doing. But nonetheless, you can start to see how this is working. And if I start to zoom in, uh, go right into central London and just uh, get the little cursor here. I could use a space bar to do this, but it's kind of hard when you're recording a video. And then we have this essentially. So we have the bus stop sort of plotted over the different things. Now, what we could do is we could start putting some of the uh, road information back now that we've sort of narrowed in on what we want to see. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just actually remove this filter here at the top. And what we should see is that the road functions uh, come back. So let's just give it a moment and boom, there we go. That's the whole entire road network that's come back. And it's now a little bit hard to see where the bus stops actually are because it's the, the road network is crazy here in Tableau. It's just, it's amazing. But how amazing is it that Tableau is doing this? Like this is just nuts. I'm working with an incredible amount of data. And um, obviously the interactions are a little bit slow, but it's not, my, my computer is also very, very capable for the record. So it's it's more than able to sort of keep up with sort of the demands here. But if you sort of narrow in on a very small part of London, you can get this incredible level of fidelity um, and map out what is essentially really, really complex networks here using open data as well. This is a really sort of powerful thing. Now, the last thing I want to do is just dial down the roadmaps a little bit, just make them a little bit more faded so they go off into the background there you go and then our bus stops stay on top and then what I'm going to do because I don't want I don't want to select the whole entire map every time I move over a single road so what I'll do because I'm just using it as a background context is I'll actually go to my map layers function so if I just hover over the map options you'll see that it kind of activates the map in the background but if I select control map layers I can actually lock these down so that they don't do that so what I'm going to do is lock the road network so that now when I hover over them you see it doesn't activate the map it becomes something sort of nice and easy to use and then I can go back to my centroids here for the bus stops I bump up the size a little bit and we can make these a little bit more easier to see okay so this is pretty much it this is uh, what I was trying to build and this is what the new feature in Tableau enables it's a really really awesome little example what I'll do is I'll publish this up to Tableau public so check it out in the description below and um, so you can have a play with it download it fair warning this is a really large data set um, I've got a fairly uh, capable computer. So if you do download this on a desktop and you're using uh, live connections, make sure you take extracts of these or the package workbook will have that in there anyway. And you can play around with this and just try and see how this works. But maybe this has given you an idea. Maybe you've got several data sets that can add context to your map and then you can use your main data set as the top layer and you can disable all of that context. As you see I've done here, I can hover over this dot here and I can see the names of the bus stop. Maybe I've got information about each of these bus stop for example the average wait time so when you hover over this you get a nice little chart showing you the average wait time at each of these stops and you can start to tell stories in a really interesting way anyway i think this is really cool let me know what you think in this uh, uh video in the comments below in the description it's a bit of a long one but it took a while to set everything up and i just wanted to make sure that i covered all the steps uh, thank you for watching and check out some more videos on 21.4 that i'll be releasing in due course take care